Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh, look at there. Updates available. No, I do not want that thing on my computer. No. <laughs> they gave it to me again. Probably, I don't know. It's um, Tuesday, March 31st, 8.59 a.m. Okay. I was... <laughs> Yesterday I wrote to Morella and I said, I'm taking a vacation for a week. I mean, I'm so tired and I have things to do around here. And that was when I had internet for like 30 minutes. Yeah, they cut me off yesterday. And I called in the morning and they had me to um, unplug this, unplug this, unplug that. Uh, I forget what all. Plug it back in. Uh, okay, now do something on the computer. Restart your computer, whatever. And it came back up. All right. It was pretty easy. No problem. Had internet for about a half hour. <laughs> okay, then by all that time, I'm like so tired. I want to go lay down. So I get off the internet. In the meanwhile, I'd written... <laughs> I'd written to Morella. I said, I'm taking a vacation for a week. <laughs> I really meant it. But uh, I can't stay away that long. I may take a few days, though. I mean, let me tell you what happened after I got up. Still can't connect to the internet again. Can't. I kept trying, trying. I wanted to order groceries, uh, different things. So I said, okay, maybe the Lord doesn't want me on the internet today. So I got off the internet. I mean, I gave up trying. <laughs> I said, oh, I don't feel like calling. Because the wait time was really long to get a human. And I had, um, I, think I, I think I did all of that with an AI. Anyway, in the morning. I'm not sure. I'm so tired. I can't remember. I can't remember what I ate for lunch. <laughs> okay, it's not lunchtime yet, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's crazy. Lord Jesus, come quickly before I forget my name. Okay. <laughs> Morella wrote me a letter. <laughs> well, she wrote several of us, so I'm going to share it. Since it was, she wrote it to everybody that I guess she has her their email. All right, she writes such beautiful things, y'all. I mean, she should have wrote books and stuff. Or at least, <clears throat> maybe devotionals. I guess when you're busy having babies and trying to raise them, you just, all you can think about is what's next for them, you know. But anyway, she said, Hi, fam. I could not write anything yesterday for the power being out. Then could not access my email. She's, you know, she's in Ecuador. It's a small village, a town, whatever. Evidently, they think it's a perfectly all right. Just cut everybody's power off. Or it goes off easily. Maybe a storm. She didn't say that. But I imagine they're probably not, don't have the technology we have. But anyway, they have the other stuff so she said I could not access my email even if the boys could see their cartoons and I could watch some videos but she could not um, connect to her email now how many people have had that problem before alright I could watch some videos like God's gifts about which I make a disclosure. I do not promote her channel, but I she does have some good stuff. She said uh, about this channel about comfort, the comfort ship coming to New York. Our only comfort can only come from above, and others that are pretty promising as to our soon departure. Yeah, let me, let me make a comment about that ship. Oh, brother. I watched, I got to watch some short videos. Yeah, I did get to watch some short videos yesterday while I had internet. 
and they were about uh, people with boots on the ground now, investigative reporting, going to hospitals in New York. Might have been the same person. I think it was, one video. Anyway, point is, he went to several hospitals. The only one where he could see patients on a gurney was at the Jamaica Hospital. Now, that tells me that might be a poor village, poor area, like like the, the ghettos. I don't know. I don't know. But those people were, I mean, one man was sitting in the waiting area, and he was, he had, he clearly had a fever. He had sweat pouring down him, which might have meant his fever was breaking. So I have no doubt that something's going around, and most likely it's the flu that would have been going around anyway. They don't need that stupid ship. Those hospitals, all the other hospitals, had no cars around. The ambulances weren't busy. There was nobody where he could, he took hand pictures of the emergency room one guy sitting in one chair in one hospital another one he's inside oh this is another guy he had um he got all his medicines at the pharmacy there he went in there and there was the hospital was all gated off with some kind of barrier Nobody could go down there. You couldn't see anybody, which that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that there isn't beds up higher in higher floors filled with coronavirus. But I guess he wanted to just point out that there weren't a whole lot of people sitting around looking, f waiting for help. The ER place was empty. I mean, I'm like thought we were in a pandemic you know and there's so many people in new york city they gotta enact such such terrible measures as going after people that are trying to go to rhode island or new jersey even sending police after them to check to see if they've gone to their vacation homes to quarantine yourself there they aren't allowed to do that they're, they have to stay in their home in New York. Yeah, someone sent me a video about that. I didn't share it because I had shared so many over the weekend. Whatever it was, I just couldn't share one more. It's too late. Anyway, I'm just telling you about it. They're to the point of going knocking on people's doors, looking for people from New York. Going to Rhode Island, i tell you what, all over the flu, this fake pandemic crisis that the United States is in. i tell you what crisis we're in. We're in a big, huge, fear-mongering, people hunkering down, afraid of germs. They're all becoming germaphobes around here. I saw a woman on an elevator that I know, good friends. Normally, she would have said, come on in, go, you know. No. She had on a mask and gloves, and was just going to her car. She still has a car and drives. Good for her. No, no, people don't even want to ride the elevator with you. It's ridiculous. It's gotten to the point of ridiculous. If it's, it's, If this thing was real, I would not say that. I just know it in my heart, and others have proved it. And logic before authority, Daniel Cannon has asked for people to take their cell phones to their local largest hospital, and without breaking the law or messing with anybody they shouldn't be, don't get up no patients' faces or anything like that. He said, try to get. Some footage on how busy is it in the emergency rooms. See what you can get without breaking the law. That's what he said. And e and then email them to him. So, I'm looking forward to that video. Because I've seen New York's hospitals. They're not busy except for the Jamaica one.
All right. Could be the way they're doing things. I know here, we have to call ahead. They come out of the emergency room all dressed in their garb. If you suspect you have a coronavirus, they take you straight back to the isolation area and work you out, work, work you out, up and down, whatever, back there. And you don't go any further or you don't go, I don't know, from there. And they do testing it with you in your car at a certain area for UAB over here. They got a tent set up and you drive up and you have to call and make an appointment. You can't just line up the streets. They're usually too busy, but the schools are probably closed. The university. Anyway, let me move on with this. I'm just saying, the whole thing is so, I hate lies. I hate lies more than anything. I hate people lying to me. And I hate that everybody's just buckling up, buckling down to the father of lies. Okay. So now she says, also, the president here says lockdown will be until May 15th and he finally doubled fuel prices see they wanted to do that before months months before and they had people protesting in the streets about it so he didn't do it now he did he's taking advantage of the fact that people can't go out on the street now and so, it is so obvious here, too, governments are not people's friends. No, they are not, Morella. Only Jesus is. As darkness falls upon the world, the entire world, it is even more obvious the bigger between the world, which has no hope, and us, whose hope shines ever more bright. Until we shine like the sun in Father's home. The devil is doing whatever delusions he can. And people are blinded by his deceiving power. Even now, I feel people in general are despaired. But not for spiritual, but physical reasons. Crying over terrestrial things is never a good idea. Whereas each of us crying over our own sins and repenting and trusting Jesus is faithful to forgive the sins we confess. He knows everything anyways. Is the best thing ever to do. Oh, that was one sentence. Uh, so, trusting Jesus, crying over your own sins and repenting and trusting Jesus is faithful to forgive the sins and confess. We confess. I'm, I'm glad I can't see very well today. He knows everything anyways is the best thing ever to do. It is a sorrow, yes, but not according to the image of this world, which goes away in a second, but according to Father's heart. He knows what is best for us. He is our only hope and a true one, like an anchor for our exhausted souls. Well, mine is much love till soon I hope so I hope it's soon too Marilla I hope it's soon the rapture she means okay well I wanted to share that with you because so so beautifully written and heartfelt and I know it's this whole thing is really it's gotten to me 
uh, and someone said downstairs when I was coming in from walking my dog, <laughs> well, riding my dog around on my lap, <laughs> um, why don't we do this every flu season? <laughs> Or she said, why don't we do this every year for the flu? I said, yeah, that's what I say. Why don't we do this every year for the flu? I said, way more people die from the flu than would have died from this. <laughs> but she didn't say nothing to that, but you know. Anyway, I'll plead the blood of Jesus over this video, the internet connection, myself, my computer, and over each and every one of you and your devices and your internet connections. And hopefully we can stay up and keep up with things and have no fear and know Jesus is near. Okay. All right. Bye for now. I'll talk to you later.